I kind of hate Google image search. When stealing images from the internet, I prefer them not to have watermarks from stock photography companies. As a developer, the obvious solution is to just build my own image search engine from scratch. And thanks to the magic of neural networks and vector databases, we can easily do that in the next five minutes. In today's video, we'll use JavaScript and a vector database called Weaviate to build a search engine that takes an image as an input, then finds images that are similar to it. Yesterday on the code report, I talked about vector databases, but not everybody was convinced. After this quick project though, you'll be able to see what makes them so powerful and unique. First of all, what is a vector database? Unlike traditional databases that store data in columns and rows, with a variety of different data types, a vector database will convert each object to a numerical array called a vector. Objects that are similar, like images that look the same, will have similar vector representations, which clusters them together in a vector space called an embedding, allowing us to then make queries based on proximity or similarity. The magic that makes this possible are large pre-trained neural networks. Like in the case of images, we'll be using in ResNet 50, but Weaviate has all kinds of other vectorizers based on the type of data you're working with. Now let's go ahead and use it to build our own custom meme search engine from scratch. First, bring up the terminal and run npm init to create a new Node.js project. That generates a package JSON file, then we can go ahead and install the Weaviate TypeScript client. From there, I'm going to make one small change to the package JSON by changing the type to module. That just allows us to use import statements instead of require in our JavaScript code. That takes care of the Node.js setup, now we need to figure out how to run the actual database. Weaviate has a cloud service that you can sign up for, but in this tutorial, I'm going to use Docker to run it locally. I'm assuming you have Docker installed on your system, but if you don't, I would recommend using Docker Desktop to get it set up quickly. Now, the complicated thing about Weaviate is that it has different modules you can use when running it. In this case, since we're doing an image search, we want the image to vector neural network module. That sounds complicated, but luckily they have a wizard to help you get set up. First, we'll select we're using it with modules, then for vectorizers, we'll choose images. Although you could also go with text and image, or clip for text and image in the same vector space. Now, under the hood, it will use a neural network based on ResNet 50 to create the embeddings. I'm choosing the PyTorch option here because that's the only one that currently supports the GPU. From there we can set the ref to vec option as disabled, and then we'll also keep OpenAI disabled, although this would be a cool option if you want to also integrate GPT-4. Now the end result of that is a curl command that will write a docker compose file to the root of our project. Go ahead and run that command, followed by docker compose up, to download the docker images and run the containers. The initial download may take a while because the ResNet 50 image is about 7 gigabytes, but the end result should be two containers running. One of which is PyTorch with the neural network, and the other is the actual database server running on localhost 8080. Now that we have our database up and running, let's go ahead and create an index.js file and start building our search engine. The first step is to initialize the API client by pointing it to our database on localhost 8080. From there, we can verify that it's working by making a query for the actual database schema. The JavaScript client uses the builder pattern, so you'll be chaining a lot of methods together. I don't necessarily love this, but it gets the job done. To get the schema, we call client schema getter do. That returns a promise that executes the query, so make sure to await it, then console log the result. Now pull up the terminal and run it with node. You should get an object with an array of classes that is currently empty. In my case, I already have a schema, so you can see that here, but let's go ahead and create a new schema now. In a vector database, we need to create a vector space, and then also provide an algorithm that tells the database how to vectorize the objects. Oh, and by the way, you can find the full source code for this project on the Fireship.io website, and consider becoming a pro member there to support my work and and get more content. First, we provide a class name, which in this case I'll call meme, then specify image to vec neural as the vectorizer. That'll use the PyTorch neural network running in that container. The vector index type is hierarchical navigable small worlds graph indexing, which is the technique used to search for data in your database. After that, we configure the image to vec module to tell it which fields actually use images, which correspond to properties that we'll set up down here. The data structure is extremely simple with just two properties. We have the image property, which is a data type of blob, that's the image itself, then we have text, which is just some extra optional data to describe the image. And with that, we've described the entire schema for the database. Now we can use the client to call class creator with that schema config, and then apply it to the database. This is roughly like a database migration, so go ahead and run the code to update the schema. And now it's time for the fun part. I'm dropping in a directory with some of my favorite programming memes, and our goal is to vectorize these into the database. But before we can do that, we need to convert them to base64 format. Use read file 
file sync from the node file system module to read one of the images, then convert it to a buffer, and then to a base64 string. And now we can write it to Weaviate. This time we'll await the client data creator with a class name of meme, and then properties that correspond to the schema, like image and text. And that's all it takes to store an image in the database. I also wrote some code to upload all of the images in the image directory, but what's so cool about this is that as we add more images to the database, the embedding is automatically updated so that images that look similar to each other are kept closer together. And that's all calculated automatically in the background with the neural network. Believe it or not, you just built your own image search engine. And now it's time for the moment of truth. As you can see here, I have a testing image, and what I want to do is make a query to find all the images that look most similar to it. To do that, we'll also need to encode it in base64 format. Then the client has a GraphQL API that we can use to make a query to the meme class name with the fields of image. Then with near image, we'll find the image that's most similar to it based on its position in the embedding. Then we can also do more traditional database query operations here, like limit, sort, and filter the results. In this case, we'll just get the one most similar image back, and then once we have that result, I'm going to write it here to the file system so we can preview it visually. Let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens. As expected, it returned the matrix meme back to us. I also tested it with a significantly different Buzz Lightyear meme, and once again we got the expected similar result back. Searching by image similarity is nothing new, but I've never seen it quite this easy to implement with your own data. And this is just the beginning. I think we'll start to see AI embedded by default in many databases in the near future. There's a ton of competition in the space right now, with other vector databases like Pinecone, and AI-driven databases like MindsDB, as well as Redis and PG Vector, just to name a few. I know a lot of people are sick of AI videos at this point, but this is a real trend. There's a lot of hype around it, but it's nothing like the Web3 trend last year. The AI tools hitting the market right now are legit AF, and will change the world over the next few years. That being said, I'll continue to keep you updated, but I think I'm ready to get back to some JavaScript frameworks in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.